breaking door now. Stop you guys. Three cut. Three cut. Cyber, hold your door. You got a plant. Killjoy, Killjoy, I'm in the door. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll get out. You're good. You're good. Okay, but you can't hold his door like this. There was a smoke here not too long ago. And if they walked over towards this corner during that time period, they can now peek and kill your cypher for free. And so this is actually a scenario where using an aftershock makes a ton of sense with Drew. Because you don't you don't really have a good way to reposition. But this guy right here gets a free kill on him. You could also wall bang with sheriffs since they're on an eco. Enlighten me. How the hell do you wall bang this spot with sheriff? Gun here. From where? Here? Is that gonna? Nah, that's gonna clip this wall. Get wider like this? No, I've never seen this in my life. Do you have a clip of anyone ever doing this to you, or you ever doing this to anybody? Or are you just an overly paranoid, low-rated player? Because I'm not worried about this, like, right there. ever. He's like, look at this shit. This guy's fully exposed to, to everything. So I'm doing it while door was closed or smoked. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. But ni neither of those things are true right now. You'd have to position so poorly to deal with that. Like, you can... It's easy to aftershock this guy. But to deal with that sheriff, you gotta come, like, out here exposed to, like... It's bad. It's fucking gamble. Right it's there. fine. They're probably not doing that. Let me do the full analysis, though, for you. Like, the math. Because you'll see it all adds up. Okay? So we have two options. Option one is don't deal with it. Okay? And then option two is deal with it. So the first thing we have to agree with are what are the odds that the guy sheriff spams to deny that plant? Honestly, what do you guys think the odds are? I would say less than 1%, but I'm down to give you 1%. I'm down to give you 1% for the sake of the math. I think it's less though. 2%? Really? So you're telling me of your fast fifth in your past 50 A hits, you've seen this happen to you, Jethro? This has happened to you. On ascent. That would be like if you played three Ascent games, it happens to you once per three games. Bullshit. It's below 1%, but we're going to call it 1% because I'll give it to you, okay? So now in the scenario where we don't give a fuck about it, um, we're, we're, we're losing. We f***ed up. Damn. So let's say our guy dies, okay? The bomb falls, and now it is 4v4. What's our odds of winning the round? We've got gun advantage. The bomb is down. Hasn't been planted yet. 4v4. Are going to give us a... 60% eh, odds of winning still because we have sight control and we have gun advantage. Okay, so we've got 60% odds of winning the round when our guy dies. We didn't clear it. Okay, now let's say we go to deal with it. Keep in mind that this only happens 1% of the time. The other percent of the time, the bomb goes down is 5v4 post plant and we're in a good position. I'm going to give us 80% odds to convert at that point. 99% of the time. We don't deal with it. Now we deal with it. So 1% of the time, I'm giving us those 80% odds. Because we f***ed that guy up. Honestly, actually, I'm getting up better because we killed a guy. Probably. So I'll give us 90% odds of winning the round when we deal with it and they were doing it. Okay? But now let's imagine we go to deal with it and they're not sheriff spamming to deny the dude's plant. Okay? Well, let's look at the minimap. Well, they could be peeking out heaven. We're not looking heaven. Nobody's looking heaven. We're no longer covered in heaven. We got to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to give us... I don't know, 70, let's say it's 70% odds of winning the round. So it's still not bad, you know? It's still pretty good. Okay, what's the E of X now? And the reason why your brain is drawn to this when you're lower ELO is because 70% is higher than 60 and 90% is higher than 80. It looks better. It looks better because both of the outcomes are, they're both more winning technically, except you, you're missing the percentages, the likelihoods of these outcomes. So when you do the math, you've got your hacking. I say we'll do it in like, like a browser so we can put the whole math equation out into one statement. When you do the math out, it is 0.99 times 70 plus 0 0.01 times 90. So that's a 70.2% conversion when we deal with it. And now when you do the math for the other one, the 99% chance and 80% of the time, a 1% chance we win 60% of the time. It's a 79.8. Does that make sense? By ignoring that unlikely threat, you're winning a lot more. Even though when it happens, you're in the worst possible scenario out of all four of these. Like Out of all four of these scenarios that exist here, the worst one to be in is the one where you don't deal with it and they kill your planter. 
That's the worst. You have the lowest win conversion in that scenario. But the problem is that scenario don't happen that much. It don't happen that much. And so we just have to accept that risk because by not accepting that risk, you're actually reducing your effective win conversion. And Valorant isn't a game of one map. You don't play one game of Ascent and then never play it again. You all in chat play hundreds of games of Ascent. You play thousands of games of Valorant. And so you have to lose these rounds. These one percenters, you just have to lose them. And if you're not losing these one percent rounds, like you're covering all of these outs, that's why you're fucking trash. Has this ever happened to you? Defenders win. We've all been there. But thanks to the generous members of the Knowers Club, not only can I help you get less of these, Defenders win. but you can even earn Valorant gift cards for successful improvement, all live on stream. Order now at discord.gg slash wuhujin or I'm taking the world to pipe. Don't try me. I'll do it. Woodrow, you're back? You're back, Woodrow? Because I told you not to come back till you had your mojo. Calm, confident Giga Chad has to log on for this VOD chat. On the last episode of coaching Woodrow, he showed up and did not complete his note of being confident in his gunfights. I was not happy. And in fact, I even added two notes because his movement was cl not clean at all. Like he wasn't air strafing at all. He was aiming with his wrist before um, he was entering the micro adjustment phase. And it just wasn't cool. And I want Woodrow to be cool. Probably. Yeah. Oh, wow, my eyes are down. Seventy-eight. Oh! Easy. Easy. Seventy-eight. Almost easy. <laughs> the guy actually just sat there and tanked it. Wait, what? <laughs> bro that's the average killjoy player this killjoy is like well i could dodge it but then i would have to take a gun fight <laughs> he's stunned yeah but like getting a gunfight while stunned is better than dying for free Okay, 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 okay. Oh, we are chilling. We are chilling. Now, would you say you have this calm consistently, Woodrow? Because we, we can cut to the chase. We can go next step. Because there are certain fights that warrant spraying. Not consistently. Oh, what the fuck, Woodrow? So, anyways, this fight right here as you peek out, I wouldn't peek out right away after getting this kill. It's a bad habit you've got. You're pretty low HP. Your teammate's not ready to trade. Your Cypher's tucked. You want him to take the next uh, fight. But let's say you were this wide already when you killed Omen. Like, your crosshair's here, you just kill Omen. When you're out here in these scenarios, the best thing to do is to actually spray transfer. Um, because this Phoenix is trading you, trades happen too fast. I mean, not yet, they don't, but they will happen too fast. That it's more like you just have to pray that you get some more damage off. Let's pull up my, uh, it's in the oh, intro, yeah. I think, in this oh, video. I'm playing Ascent. <laughs> and this sort of happens. Yeah, Recon sucks. Yeah, so I kill this Killjoy, and I'm out in the open, so a trade is coming, and you see I just keep spraying. So again, spray, spray, and I'm even spray transferring to the third guy without thinking about it. And then when I see I've got some cover from the third guy because he walked forwards, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I can reset a bit. So conveniently, it's like the same type of engagement. But yeah, we, we need to um reset after this kill here, not insta repeat. Like right here. If you would tuck instead of flashing, you're like giga smurfing. If you're running the over aim drill, wouldn't you naturally be moving to cover? Okay, no, no. Let me explain. And this is why um, occasionally I'll get comments. Some people are like, yo, can I do like under aim hooch? I find it easier. No shit you find it easier to look left, walk left when the boss spawns left. Because just think about it. Just think about what I just said. That's easy as f 
it's all left looking right moving right when the boss spawns on the right everyone can do that everyone can do that there's, there's no you're not gonna get dizzy there's no crisscross of the actions and so the reason why we just practice the over aim is because you're still practicing aiming while moving left and right it's because you just gain the under aim for free like if i take somebody in chat who's got like a 25 or higher average on medium over aim it'll take you two attempts and you'll be on the same score with under aim because under aim is that simple it's it's so much easier so that's why the drill only covers over aim because that's the hard motion it's not the only motion we use it's just the hard one does that make sense mr chatter who asked like right here we're strafing left our crosshair is on his right we're not gonna like aim over here and strafe back at this point because we would unpeak him i mean to be fair like that's fine but at this point we're committed so i would just aim like down here and that crosshair would like step onto his head and that type of motion doesn't need to be explicitly practiced because it's effectively the over aim drill just pretend you started over here right you flicked past him and you're gonna walk left onto him it's the same motion yeah easy okay we we should talk about the crosshair placement what the yeah and we should talk about the util okay so first of all, uh, back wall. You know the rule. You're not allowed to break the rules. Nobody's allowed to break the rule until you're immortal. When you're immortal, you can be like, oh, but Hooch, I thought he would be close. Deal. If your rank icon is below immortal, I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to hear it. The crosshair belongs at the far wall of whatever you're aiming at. So the far wall here is this height, uh, roughly like, I'd say aligned with like these bolts. And you'll see, we get like one frame of this his head actually because he's like jumping but that's like where he was because he went far wall Rage is stuck. yeah here you're just using too much util it feels bad but you're using too much util like when you're out like this i would have stayed here this position's way better now i get that tiles is scary or whatever but your cypher's coming out to help you. You're chilling. You have a flash for open later. I wouldn't even use the flash. Whenever you pull out util and you're in the open, you can get peeked. It's no good. So like you can't pull out your flash right now pretty much ever because um he can peek and kill you. But what you do have is you've got cypher coming behind you, which is is broken. After you kill jet, you and cypher just hold this guy. You just hold open. You slowly creep out, peek the guy. What's he going to do? Nothing. They're on attack. He's got to get to B or A. So he has to leave. He'll just be tucked here the whole round. Nah, he'll peek out eventually. And then you've got two dudes holding him and you win. The moment you pull out flash, you give that omen an opportunity to peek out, kill your cypher. And now you don't have a gun out to trade. Okay, bro. Why are you aftershocking this guy? Let's be real, Woodrow. Like, I know I just told you to be crazy and take fights and whatnot, and we weren't going to talk about util, but this isn't crazy and it's not taking fights. In fact, it's like kind of insecure. Like, if they're there, aren't they giga stunned? They're like super mega ultra stunned. Well, what's the aftershock for? That aftershock could come in handy. Like, now. What's Ooh, good spray transfer. He's in, he's in spawn, he's in. Okay, Woodrow. Okay, 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 okay. I get it. You're doing the correct thing. I would fuck with it so hard if you tried to kill this guy with two bullets. I would fuck with it so hard. You have no idea. <laughs> like, I want you holding that guy, shooting one bullet, and Giga flicking away. Get him. Hey, what get was him. That? I have no utility left. You bring in the nice Okay, let's talk, him, I, I, let's talk about the peak. Let's talk about the peak. Uh, your crosshair is kind of hiding in the YouTube artifacts, but it's roughly here. Okay, that's not good. Keep in mind in this game, head height remains consistent at any depth when you are level, when there's no vertical change. And that's because we don't shoot our gun in this game from like our shoulders or whatever. Our gun is actually lasers that fire out of our eyeballs. And so looking straight ahead will always hit the head at any depth assuming the uh there's no variance in the, the z axis or the y axis whatever you want to call it so because there's no variance here their head is going to be exactly on this axis like exactly does that make sense you, you can see right here let's just cast a line out as horizontal as i can make it laser eyes does that make sense it's way like that's why your crosshair is too low um you have to look straight ahead to aim at head height which is convenient 
because that means it's head height at like all all angles essentially but so your crosshair is too low and it's too wide like this peak is ugly it's really ugly it's not cool i thought you were supposed to be cool what? you're also you don't have keyboard overlay on but i don't need get it, it, get it to I, I tell you cool. that right here you are um you're holding w and d i can tell look at the look at your delta this is a w and d circular peak that's not good that's not good woodrow what are you doing you're getting close to being cool but you're not cool yet but you're cooler there it is somewhere close hey put a cup, put a cup. Why didn't you fire your gun? I don't need you killing this guy. In fact, your peak was quite weird. But you didn't even fire? TP somewhere close. Hey, put a cup. Whoa, 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 Look at minimap while holding an angle. That's not okay. TP somewhere close. So you stun the guy. You aftershock the guy. And now they have to come across here while stunned to survive the aftershock. And you unpeak. And I know what you're thinking. What if it's more people? Who? What do you mean? Look, let's pretend it's more people. I'm going to boot up Valorant because it's hard for you to visualize correctly how I would play it. You stunned? You know, aftershock? Whatever. And you can come out here. Notice I'm not, um, I'm not going to hold it this way. Because that's like on angle. You see he's peeking. We'll see it there. After I like throw my aftershock, I'm going to come over here to catch them walking away because it's like trickier like, like i'm penguin yeah penguin's me this dude peeking over here you see you see how they get surprised by the penguin and in fact they'll frequently over peek the penguin it means my odds of dying are low and if they peek out there then i can do this come over and you know consider fighting more or whatever like whatever but the point is i'll definitely live i'm not dead I come over here like if you care so much about living right but there's ways to stay alive while being aggressive and you're not doing them because like you're too paranoid because you know what your brain's probably thinking about this angle you're like yeah but what if they phoenix flash into tree that's probably what you're thinking and that is too far you you can't you can't there's always um always something that'll kill you like if you take any radiant players vod you can pretty much always pause and if you have perfect wall hacks, you could kill them. You could kill them because Radiant players take acceptable levels of risk. But there's a lot of better angles that are much more aggressive that we can be playing. Um, this is one Dopey likes to play. Dopey likes to come out here. Boom, boom. He finds this angle very effective. Let's penguin. So, of course, the guy peeking here doesn't see. He got tiles. And then they'll like, they might come out here. They're paranoid. Notice the penguins just now revealing. As they're like revealing all of the shit bot mid, it's a pretty nice, fun off angle. And this will give you way more info. Like you'll get info if they're walking up right there. into mid way earlier. Like way, way, way earlier. Yeah, and like it still shows. Like right here, we're in 4v1. You've got That's 17 good. bullets. And instead of coming over to support Cypher, like you've got the, your brain isn't wired correctly. I've lost rounds like this. And you know how I lose rounds like this? Cypher takes a 50. Brimstone takes a 50. Jet flanks takes a 50. And then you take a 50 and die because you have to. That's happened to all of us. Happened to all of us. So why the f don't you feel more pressure to come over to this Cypher to turn that shit into a 2v1 as fast as possible? You've got 17 bullets. In what world is that not enough? There hasn't been a single kill this game you've needed 17 bullets for. It's one guy. And you're like, time to reload and tuck into cover. And there's the 50. There it is right there. Yeah, there's one gem. Okay, so this is like pattern recognition. But anytime a duelist takes an early engagement A main and falls back, they route this way because it's the only way that they can safely get to cover fast enough. If they try to route dice this way, you will spot them too early. So they need to effectively be unpeaking the angle as they're routing back site. And so they always route Jen here. This is just like an hour's diff. I know that that jet's Jen. I know that my jet's taking aggro onto Omen. And so this is where we're going to take it one step further. You've watched enough of my raise gameplay now. What side am I peeking on? Am I peeking left or right right now? Like, most likely. I'm peeking right. Exactly. I almost always peek right. 
is why right here you should be routing left because that guy's gonna peek out and kill your poor jet. We watch. One tree. There she is. Three. And you don't get, the, you aren't able to like trade because you're not able to see yourself as this guy. Like you know the answer, you know what they're likely to do, but you don't act upon it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if subconsciously you act upon it in the way that ensures your safety. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if you had the feeling she peeked that way and that, therefore, you come this way to hopefully shoot her in the back. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what you're doing subconsciously. Where you're, like, trying to avoid having to take it this way. Because this way is, like, they're looking right at you. But it's just too important because this guy's... Your jet's here. You're, you have to help her. Cyprus was Why is this two wrist swipes, Woodrow? It's not even a 180. Your mouse is on the left side of your pad? What do you mean? Then spin this way. Like if my mouse is on the left, I can spin this way to fight. Now, it is a learning moment, though. Because if I'm playing this angle, my mouse will never be on the left side of my mouse pad. Like, when I reset it. Let's say I'm walking over here. When I reset my mouse, I'm putting it on my right. You know, and it should be pretty intuitive as to why. There's nothing over here. Nothing. It's just a wall. Everything's over here. And so I want my mouse pad to accommodate that. So my mouse is going to be pretty far on the right side of my pad. So if any threat happens anywhere. Right there. Right like there. Anywhere. Then in one smooth motion, I can aim at all of those. No picking up my mouse there. Breaking door now. Two cut. Two cut. Cyber, hold your door. You got a plant. Kill joint. Kill joint. I'm in door. door. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll get out. You're good. You're good. Okay, but you can't hold his door like this. That's why you're fucking trash. I don't clear anything and I'm slow. <laughs> Base. Base. And I, I want to be clear, nobody in Hilo thinks about Valorant that way. They're not thinking about the mathematical odds of a decision. That's way too slow. The shortcut is if you think something's unlikely, don't worry about it. Sometimes you're wrong not to worry about it Mathematic, from a mathematical standpoint. Like if you did the evaluation, it was just the right amount of likely that it you should have worried about it, but it doesn't fucking matter. If it's unlikely, don't worry about it. Bam. Last player standing. 40, 40. You should run. That is so wall bangable, it's not even funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> Killjoy players, when you're in that clutch, I got you. If you just ult in front of this little boat, right there. They, can, they can't wall bang it. Those who know any Killjoy ult for retake is wall bangable. Yeah, I'm sure you've got some nerd hacking. What, do you have to jump on the boxes right to wall bang this one? I'm actually curious now. King nerd, bro. King nerd. <laughs> All right, teach me the lineup. Teach me the lineup. Hop in and drag me. How, how do you break it? <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you know? <laughs> Show me the lineup. Show me the lineup. You're clearly this, lining something up. Oh, it's actually not a lineup. Really? You're just hacking uh, well, aiming? It's a ping lineup. So, yeah, 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 yeah. so I want you to know that like almost every person I've ever showed this to, even like pro players, did not know this was possible. Yeah, no. Um, you swap to Killjoy. I want to. I want to learn it. Looks like Hooch is the dummy. Left. To be fair, like, I'm a very reasonable oh, dummy. Uh, wrong, wrong KH. Like, oops. Just like Havern said, there's a lot of tier left. one pros who will tell you you can't wallbang this, too. Yeah. My whole team didn't know you could wallbang this, so I'll show them. Um, Finally. So I'm just going to place it. And the trick is you ping on, like, see here. I'll show you how to do it. So, like, see the boat that I'm on right now? Yeah, I do. You're going to ping, like, right here on the boat. In right. front of the killjoy ult, right just there anywhere in it. Boat. So where, no, no, wherever I killjoy ult it, you just like on the, the edge side. of the boat. On the edge of the yeah, boat. Yeah. So like on this edge of the boat, you just ping and then you shoot at the ping until okay. you hear a ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Oh, so like, you're right. I'll get audio feedback. You should run. Here, here. What the? F this ping is here. not easy with my banana cursor. <laughs> what the fuck? 
I'll take mid now. Let's go. Hot mid dead. Hot mid dead. Easy. Uh, so after killing top mid there, it's almost always A, by the way. We'll, we'll look at the mini map, but do you see why it should be A? That's the guy who lurked out A main. You just killed them. And this is the guy who lurked out catwalk. You just killed them. And so if anybody's on A, they're going to be like in this metaphorical box over here, like rotating from B. Uh, round 19 after you kill Omen. Yeah. You see? Dead open. Completely open. What? One person was running away. Smoke. We know where Jet was. Jet likes to play catwalk. He just oh, mid, yeah. he's mid, he's mid. He's mid, 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 mid. Ooh, bad. Just find open his. Sorry, I thought you already had it. <laughs> okay, there's a trickier plant. It's like over here. It basically lets you plant for um, main, anyways, but it also lets you. Um, it's like exposed to hell. So you can play in this hell area and also deny the diffuse. It's also safe from heaven to plant still. Easy peasy. And your main guy can see the whole thing. This plant's actually really common in higher elo. And I like don't think I've ever seen anybody plant here in lower elo. <laughs> nah, bro doesn't have lineups. I'll say now. Setting it. He's out now. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, they're off. I have, I have a blind too. You should have just insta ulted, Woodrow. It's the last round. You can just insta ult to get them off the bomb, guaranteed. Yeah, you you actually just lost the round. I guess she might be sticking. You, you could like tickle the check. It, it's not too, it's not super cut and dry, I guess, because of how early she tapped. But you see, you, she like dodges your flash. But she just giga whiffs. Oh, you go! Sorry, I, I didn't realize you're. I'm afraid she's sticking. No, you're not, though. So at this point, it's rock, paper, scissors. If she's sticking, you have to just peek and kill her. Okay? But you flash, which means you're not afraid she's sticking. You're afraid that she is both sticking and not sticking. You're afraid of both, which is bullshit. Which is it, Woodrow? Anyways, I would. You pretty much have to gamble if she's not sticking, I'd say. You should have your gun out. Look at the main map. Yeah, your raid sees nothing a main. And so Sova's pushing me, man. Fucking noob. Woodrow. He sees the future. Bro, it's no, it's like not the future. Well, you would have easily struck out on cross replacement at dude dude. No looking at mini map while holding angles unless you are actively unpeaking said angle while you glance at minimap to do take way more risk do, do, do. right now your risk tolerance is so low that i watched you reload your vandal with 17 bullets in a 4v1 that i don't i don't think i need to say anything more than that you know you're, you're not down to take any risk and that inherently causes you to lose other examples where i can take risk for the notes you just have to take more fights like it's too difficult to like break down but this is why i can play raise and get to immortal while sucking ass at raise and i don't start back in platinum or whatever you know like i'm bad at raise how come i'm not platinum like another raise player who's bad at raise and hell there's raise players in platinum who are better than me at raise like they've got better movement with raise they've got better util they've got better prep how come i'm so much higher rated and it's because this shit is so important. I'm very willing to take risk at the right times. And knowing when the right times are is like a, an equation of experience and lack of cope. Like if every time you die to a timing, you cope about it in the wrong way, then you won't learn. But if you learn correctly from your deaths, then you'll pick it up pretty quickly. And that's why I'm like way higher rated, even on a role that I'm really bad at. Use utility less when you have big numbers advantages. Actually, here, let's just explain it this way. Utility is best used to contest unknown space that you do, 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 have a bad habit of using utility to contest known threats at significant cost <laughs> to your conversion rate. Like sometimes using utility is correct. 
to kill these guys, but you use it without second thought. Like a lot of the time, if the dude's stuck hell, it's stunning them hell is really good. Really good. But a lot of the time, it's also really good. Like if the guy's the front gen and your teammate is about right to peak there. A main, it's a lot better to just wait with your gun. Your teammate peaks and you peak because you can't control this guy. He's going to peak and your stun's going to be too late. 